everyone. Welcome to the series where we're going to be building an AI-ready backend with Azure Functions, Azure Cosmos DB NoSQL, Python, and Fast API. Today, we're focused on data modeling. Over the next couple of videos, we're going to be covering client configuration with Fast API dependency injection, async operations, batch operations, and a couple of other topics sprinkled amongst those videos. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and you know turn that notification bell on so you can stay up to date with all the videos on these series. Today, we're going to look at how we can model data with Pydantic in Azure Cosmos DB. A good model or a good design for our model means our application can scale globally and we'll have predictable costs, which is very important, right? So let's dive right in and take a look at what we're even talking about. Let's kick things off by taking a look at our product base model. These are fields that are intrinsic to a product. I've intentionally left this minimal and simple for flexibility purposes. So once you understand the foundations, feel free to add any fields that you find appropriate. The category field is our partition key. Striking a balance to not create too many partitions or too few partitions is important in Cosmos DB because this partition key is how Cosmos DB decides how to group or how to partition your data across physical servers. So as an example here, SKU might create too many partitions, but status might create too few because we only have two values for status, right? Categories is a natural way of partitioning or grouping products. Think about electronics, clothing, kitchenware, et cetera. So it's actually a great key for us here. Additionally, Pydantic provides us with more tools that we can leverage to validate our data. So for example, minimum length, maximum length, we also have a regex pattern for our SKU here. And we also have a model config here that sets the extra value to forbid, meaning that any additional field is not allowed. This is important because we don't want to add just random data to our documents. Cosmos DB uses something called an RU or a request unit, which is based on the size of your document and the complexity of your document to figure out or to establish how much an operation costs. So it's important to make sure our, our documents contain only the information, only the fields necessary. Now let's take a look at the other models that we have in this product.py file. You might think that using one model for the entire API makes sense, but keep in mind that different API operations are gonna have different contexts. So as an example, when I create a product, I'm actually using the product to create model that will inherit from the product base model. At the moment, we don't have additional fields here, but I've left this again for flexibility purposes. In the future, we might need fields here that we don't have in the product base model. So that's why this is here. When we want to update a product, we're going to use the product update model, which is a base model because the fields in product are all required. However, when we update a product, there might be fields that we do not want to provide. So we've set them all to optional. Additionally, here in our uh, model uh, validator, we have to make sure that we are receiving at least one updated field. If not, it makes no sense to make a call to the database with no information, right? Now, let's take a look at another uh, model here. Uh, we can take a look at the product response. So this will inherit from product. We'll have all the fields from product. Additionally, we'll have ID, e-tag, last updated, and the Cosmos DB system fields, RID, self, attachments, and timestamp. When you think about what we want to provide when a client asks for all the information for an item, well, we want to make sure those system fields are there. They might need to make a call to an update command, and they might need the e-tag or some other field here. So it's important for us to provide everything there. That's why we have this product response context. Additionally, we have a model for our batch operations. So this one's pretty simple. All it's doing here is going, it's going to forbid any extra fields. But if we take a look at, for example, product create, batch create, it inherits from this batch operation. And additionally, it is actually going to use product create model as well, but it's a list of them, right? So we can start to see how these models really 
let us detail and describe our data in ways that are going to be very programmer friendly, right? API friendly. And it makes for programming the actual API a lot cleaner, a lot neater, and a lot easier to read through and to consume, right? One last one we can take a look at is, let's take a look at product batch delete item. Actually product batch update, actually this one here, this one might make a little bit more sense. So our product batch update item is inheriting from a versioned product identifier, which is probably down, no, it's probably up here. There's so many options here. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this. So our version product identifier inherits from product identifier, which has an ID in a category. So essentially the fields that will identify a product. But on top of that, it has an E tag, which is great for optimistic concurrency control, right? So it's a product that has the E tag field there. So when we are going to create a, a, a batch update, right, we need the changes, which will be of type product update. And we need to inherit from version to product identifier because we need that E tag. It's very important to make sure our updates are respecting any other potential updates that are happening there too. Feel free to take a look at the product.py further explore these models, but this is the foundation. And from here, you can take a look at how to configure our client, build our API and a lot more things to get our inventory system going. Thanks for watching this video. This was a primer on how we can use Pydantic to model our data for Cosmos DB. Now we have everything that we need to continue building the other layers of our application. So next video, we're gonna cover our client configuration. And over the next couple of videos, we'll start to build out the CRUD operations and the API endpoints necessary. Any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.